Christian so often. It contradicts the Bible. Thank you very much. The New Testament contradicts the Bible too. God doesn't change his mind. The Quran is a complete change. Thank you very much. New Testament, God changed his mind. New Testament. Etc. Etc. Et yeah. The, the Muslims believe that we change the Torah. They say that we have that we replaced uh, Yishmoel with Yitzchak. But not just that. The whole Torah. No. 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 Yeah, yeah. No. 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 Third chapter. I read. Wrong. 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 <laughs> They accept the Torah. They accept Moses. They accept all that. They do. But they, they, they say we have changed there where, where the allusions to, uh, to, uh, to Ishmael, to, the, to that tradition. Not just there we have, that's, their, that's their basic but, thing. They say it was Almost distorted now. over time. Huh? They say it was distorted over time. No, they're not necessarily that, over time. It says no, no, no. that the Avram was, uh, he said he married his sister, can't be his sister. No, no, no. no. He says, Tamar, Yehuda, a terrible no. light, and his daughter is disgusting. All those things no, that they no, say, no, it's not no, true. No, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong. I've studied the Quran. So I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> I, I even taught comparative religion, okay? Uh, their basic claim is that we have distorted the Torah, the Torah which is definitely from God, they say, the laws and everything definitely from God, but we have distorted some of the historical accounts to make it into our tradition as opposed to the authentic original tradition which is the line going through Keturah and going through Ishmael, etc, etc. That is the basic claim. Uh, but for, so therefore for the rest they accept the content of the, of the, of the Bible. Um, so they have no quarrel, no quarrel, uh, quarrel with that at all. Uh, so the, but in any case it points out that the, the Christians say that they have distorted we are talking here, we're not talking here necessarily about literary criticism, talk even about the message that these laws are no longer applied, these laws do apply, etc., etc. Well, if God changes his mind once, why can he not change his mind twice? And for that there is no answer. And that is the basic refutation of all the other religions as far as I'm concerned. The Christian, on the other hand, for himself will indeed have a serious problem. The Muslim, for himself, will indeed have a serious problem. Why should I accept this tradition as opposed to another one? Because his tradition has exactly the identical foundation that the other traditions have. So we, the Jews, are really literally the only ones who are not caught in that bind. And which even they accept for that matter. We are not caught in that bind because we are not based on... Uh, with every religion you start with the prophet, from the prophet you move to the Bible. With us, it's the other way around. We start with the Bible, and from the Bible we move to the Prophet. It's because of Sinai that we accept Moshe. Not that because of Moshe we accept Sinai. And as it says in the Torah itself, when God told Moshe in Pashis Yisrael that it's going to be this revelation, and I'm going to speak to them, then God says to him, Vegam In you too they will believe forever. Which means before that, they had accepted Moshe. After all, he had redeemed them. He had done all these things for them. But they believed in him simply because they saw these miracles that he performed. Miracles that he performs are very impressive. If Adini would show up here tonight and perform some of his tricks, your eyes will pop out. Some of his tricks, you still don't even know how he did them. But is any one of you going to think seriously that it's really magic? Or are you going to say, sleight of hand, the hand is quicker than the eye, etc., etc. How do I pull a 50-foot rope out of your nose? It doesn't even fit into my head. <laughs> How do I put these silver dollars out of your, your ears, etc.? It doesn't fit in there. It doesn't, couldn't possibly go through that hole. And all these other things. So they have these takes. And uh, miracles have this problem. Miracles have the problem, I never really know, is it really a miracle, or is it merely sleight of hand? And not, never mind the fact that you have in the Torah that the magicians of the sign also perform some of the miracles. Sure, the kinim they couldn't do. So they said, suddenly, it's the finger of God. That's a cop-out. They were not up to date with the latest uh, magic journals. So they were afraid they were going to be fired by power. So they said, finger of God, so it lets them off the hook. But they could turn this, uh, a, a stick into a snake. They could turn, make water turn into uh, to blood. They can bring about the frogs. They could do most of, the, of the, these miracles. They could do also. So, you're not even going into the question of whether such a thing as magic or not. But the point is, miracles mean nothing. Miracles, if you have already your foundation to believe in, you believe in the prophet, and you believe in, in all these things, uh, then the miracle becomes a sign. 
But a miracle is never something to base it on. Once they thought that thunder and lightning are, are miracles. Today, of course, you know what is thunder? Thunder means the angels are moving the furniture up there. Makes a lot of noise. <laughs> um, but, 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 but that's all it is. We have simple explanations. Things which were once unexplainable were right away looked at as supernatural. So how do I know that it's really supernatural? How do I know that it's uh, a miraculous supernatural as opposed to some kind of slight event? I have no way of knowing. And therefore the faith in Moshe was really on very shaky grounds until Sinai. Until Sinai, now I know Moshe is a true prophet. Why? Because God revealed himself precisely on that day, in that place, at that time that Moshe told him. And that God revealing himself, that is something we experienced. Which means God played along with whatever Moshe told us. So therefore God verified that Moshe is a true prophet. That's the foundation, the exclusive foundation of Judaism. If you bring me another religion that has the same thing, then I would have a problem. But since there is no such other religion, so therefore I have no problem. For those who base themselves prophet, therefore Bible, therefore this lifestyle, they have this problem. We don't. Next question. Alright, so, yeah, so, so pretty much the answer from there was that, that you're, you're brought up, you're conditioned to believe a certain way, but you reach a certain age. No, 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 no. That's in terms of the, the uh, an initial faith when you are young. Right. When, you have, when you have no way, you have no way of knowing what to right. do, how you to relate. A age. But then you reach a certain right. age of intelligence uh, where just as you do in everything else in life, you use your own mind, certainly when you reach maturity, and even to the point that some people, the fact, the proof you have, that people, there are many more people who have been raised and brought up religiously who have dropped religion rather than the other way around. Right, so this, is, many okay, so this, this which only goes to show again that you always retain your independence and that you always have this power of using your mind to make decisions for good or for better or for worse. So therefore it is not brainwashing. As a matter of fact, I've often given that as an answer to people saying, you know, religious education in childhood is really brainwashing and it's unfair. It's similar to, we call it, intellectual child abuse. Same as to say about circumcision is child abuse. So there's also intellectual child abuse. And don't give them, don't indoctrinate them. Wait till they are 14, 15, the more is mature, and then give them education so then at that age they can make their own decisions. My answer to that is no, exactly on the contrary. By raising you religiously and by giving you a religious, strong religious education from childhood on, that's how I provide you and enable you to have freedom of choice. Because it's only once you have been raised that way that first of all you see if somebody comes from out of the blue and I say to him now a Jewish, non-religious Jew I say, you know, to be proper Jewish you have to keep Shabbos you have to keep kosher uh, you have to do this, you have to do that he will look at me, you're crazy it's a straitjacket 21st century Shabbos take off this, Yom Tev and all that and then the dietary laws it's impossible to lift that up. and indeed if you look at it objectively, it does look impossible. It's literally putting on a straitjacket. That your whole life becomes rest uh, restricted, limited, uh, where I've lived <laughs> in a completely different way. Till now, I'm hungry, probably McDonald's, uh, at Wendy's. It is now. All of a sudden, no, you have to schlep out to find some crocodile hole out in the Albany and uh, Empire called Estos, uh, some, some kind of greasy uh, Chinese food and what have you, um, or go to Kingston, there, which is the, the, the so called pizza house, whatever it is, what they serve there, uh, they call it pizza, um, uh, and so forth. Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't taste the same, the price is three times as much, etc., etc., etc. There's no way I can, can have this drastic change. Once you have been raised that way, and you see, hey, Shabbos is the most normal thing. Shabbos is no hassle to somebody that's been raised with um, Shabbos. Kashus is no hassle to somebody that's been raised with Kashus. So why do because, they leave it? Huh? So why do they leave it? Why, why do they leave anything? But, but no, it's not because of the hassle, because they saw it is possible, and you can have pretty much, certainly nowadays, you can have pretty much anything that you want. You can even have kosher bacon, with no you. It's a mutation flavor. 
Uh, Rabbi, somebody would know, how would that somebody know if it's really proper invitation flavor? That is a different question. Um, et cetera. You can have place of bigger bagels. I don't know if it's still, but a few years ago they, they made all splash there and so forth. So all this imitation, artificial uh, flavoring, artificial uh, taste, artificial this, everything today is possible. But the main thing is you have been raised to lead pretty much a normal life. Later, as you go older, and now you are tempted. A, it makes it easier to go that way. But it's not impossible. You have seen yourself that it is not impossible. And not just not impossible, it's not even that big of a hassle. It is a bit of a hassle, yes, if you see the easy convenience that is more readily available there. Uh, that I don't have to tamp uh, to this store, to that store, and look for, the, uh, for this kosher symbol or that kosher symbol. But still, you have you have already experienced the fact that it is possible. That it is not something out. So that, that's where you get the advantage. Now you really have an option. Now that you have experienced that lifestyle, now you're exposed to another lifestyle. So now uh, you can choose. And when you choose now, you cannot come with the excuse, well, that is impossible. So now you choose for whatever other reasons go through your head. Whatever temptations makes it easier, and so forth. So you want, uh, oh, oh, I don't have to go into details. Whatever reason, people make choices. The same as people can make choices the other way around as well. Um, so the, that's where you get the freedom of choice. And the, here again, the proof of the pudding is that you have more people dropping out of religion than dropping into religion, which shows you again that the freedom of choice you have retained. And that freedom of choice, this prior choshis, I gave you by raising you precisely, seeing firsthand the actual experience of the religious way of life. And so here, uh, here likewise. So the, it's not a question of brainwashing, it's a question of exposing you. Where you have been exposed to that experience, so that you know what it is like, um, you recognize the reality of it, and then later on, of course, we are all free, and that's what makes us humans, so that we can choose. And if it wouldn't be that way, if there wouldn't be the temptations out there, you would have no freedom choice. So the argument of this is brainwashing and intellectual child abuse as well is just so much hogwash. It's the exact opposite of uh, what reality is. So not, not all of them is temptations. A lot of it's just convenience. Same thing. What is Why con- is that? I mean, it's like saying, you know what, instead of taking, instead of taking a plane, let's just walk everywhere. We exactly. can't. We can do Con- it. Convenient. Con- convenience is temptation. Well, yeah, well, that's, that's the same thing. Fine, for the same huh? reason. I mean, fine, but, but, but that's what, what is temptation? Temptation means either it tastes better or it, uh, the, the forbidden fruits taste sweeter. You have to do things much more if you have more time. Or huh? That's the temptation. That's the temptation. It's, it's just we are, we are quibbling over words. But it's where I seek my own convenience which means I seek my self-indulgence. I want to take it easy. I do not want to be restrained. I do not want to have things difficult for me. Or I would not just not make it difficult, but I would like to have things so much easier that I can do pretty much as I want, as I wish, uh, whenever I want, wherever I want. That's convenience. And that's the temptation. That's the whole temptation of life. There's, there is no other temptation. All temptations fall into the, con- the category of convenience. That it suits me best, it gives me a pleasure, and that's convenient to me. That's what it is all about. So it's just semantics. Can we call it convenience, call it temptation? It's the same thing. Yeah, but efficiency isn't that. Pardon? It, traveling by, 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 by plane is more efficient. Yeah. Nothing to do with your convenience. It has, it's more efficient. Yeah, so? So therefore you do it. Well, why, well, how do you make it convenient if it's really efficient? In a... a, a, a convenience or efficient, if it's efficient and it's legit, there's no problem with it. But if it's uh, uh, efficient, but it's um, n- not really within the uh, limitations of the right thing to do, then uh, the efficiency is lost in the, 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 in the greater value. Who makes the right thing? Ah! <laughs> so, 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 so then you come back to square one. So once you have your value system, then that's it. 
and then you base it on that. But we are not even talking about efficiency. We, 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 when we talk about these things, you, can, you can't say that uh, working on Shabbos is so much more efficient for making, uh, for making more money. Of course it is. Of course, you open the store, it's, it's a major market day, etc., etc. So it's very efficient making money. But then I have my value system, and if I believe that Panosse does not really come just from your own effort, but Panosse, whatever is coming to you, will come to you, the proof you have there are lots of stores that are open on Shabbos, and they can't make a go of it. And there are some stores which are closed on Shabbos and they do make a go of it. So therefore,